cracking shells on your bash bunny this time on hack five. Hello and welcome to Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen and on this dose of Technolust we are hacking shells on the Bash Bunny. If you're a seasoned hardware hacker, we're going to be talking about getting serial through UARTs on devices, so you may already know, but if you're not privy to this secret within the hardware world, welcome, because today we're going to be getting serial access on our Bash Bunnies, to which you're probably thinking to yourself, but Darren, there's a dedicated serial console in arming mode. And I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a soft serial by gadget. What we're getting is a dedicated hardware serial access, which will allow us to have serial while having serial. Or have serial by hardware and any other attack modes and always being able to tell what's going on on that device, which is fantastic for development. This is uh, something that I'm doing right now because I'm digging into a little bit of research on some cool new attack modes. But in any event, it's also something that you may want to have in your repertoire as a hacker because it's something that you will find on numerous devices and being able to have a shell on a device. Mm right? Uh, so within the actual development scope of Hack5 devices, this is typically the case, uh, you know, having hard serial means that you can, you know, see what's going on regardless of, uh, you know, having uh, SSH access over a network or whatever have you. It's the reason that that's, that's what that piece of fancy gear over there, that's my soldering setup. And typically what I do when we're developing a, a product, here's the, uh, the OWL for instance, I use a dedicated serial connection onto the boards. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky with some of the, uh, the smaller devices, like here is one of the very early shark jacks. And uh, this one you have to use tiny, tiny fly wires um, because the pads are so small. But essentially, what this allows me to do is, while developing for the Shark Jack, I can always know like what's going on in the boot sequence. I can get into the bootloader at any time. It's handy for flashing firmware. Uh, so it's a super useful thing to, to be able to do. This was actually really nice because one of the original uh, Shark Jacks had a, uh, a, the, an incorrect size LDO. And what that meant was there wasn't enough current being passed to the board. So actually at boot, when it was initializing various uh, you know pieces of the hardware, it would actually trip the circuit as it were and reboot because it literally didn't have enough juice to get over this one hump, this one spike in the boot sequence. And the only way that you would know otherwise, because if you're looking at it, it's just a you know flashing LED while it boots. Uh, the only way you would otherwise know is if you had dedicated serial access, which is why I like to do this. So uh, what I'm going to do today is demonstrate how to do that on your Bash Bunny. Now, obviously, I should mention that this voids warranties, but that's just the case with any gear that you take apart and start you know, drilling holes into and soldering onto, uh, but also that this is applicable not just to the bash bunny in the same way that I just, you know, demonstrated with the signal or the uh, shark jack here. In fact, even on the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7, we go as far as to make it a little easier with the little header boards there. So you don't even have to do any soldering. But in any event, uh, this is a really useful skill to have because there are so many consumer devices where you may find just unlocked serial ports, which is kind of you know, there for the developers of the hardware and like, you know, what I was just talking about, how we use it as developers. So in any event, let's get right into it. Essentially, what you're going to need to do is look for four pads. That's the telltale sign. It's typically four in a row. Uh, and what you're going to look for, sometimes it's silk screened, the, uh, sometimes it's not. But in any event, RX, TX, GND, VCC. So the receive, the transmit, the uh, ground, and the voltage. Typically, we don't use the voltage. Uh, and actually, you can like ground to if you can't find if Sometimes you can actually ground to other things. Does, this is, there's EES out there cringing. But in any event, that's what you're looking for. I'm going to show you exactly where they are on the Bash Bunny. If you look closely, they are in the top right next to the USB port. And you'll also notice that uh, there's a little bit of computer ham on that board. Now, this stuff right here, this wonderful squishy, and, you, and, and I know it's tempting, but this is a heat sink. So when you're doing this hack, 
um, don't pull this off that's necessary to cool and for thermal stuff. And I, I know it because it's like so tempting. I mean, it's like it looks delicious, but don't eat this computer ham because you'll end up in the hospital. And now is just not a time to go to the hospital, although it's probably delicious. Once you found those, it's just a matter of soldering on a serial device. Now, the serial device that I like to use is a CP2102. This is a very common USB UART or USB TTL, and that will allow you to go ahead and get your serial on there. Uh, I only connect the ground volt, uh, sorry, the ground RX and TX. Uh, and the nice thing about this chip is it also works on Android, which is pretty cool. Soldering wise, it's just a matter of globbing the pads, tinning your wires, soldering those bad boys together, and then test before you go any further. Uh, just go ahead and plug it into your computer, use any serial program. I use one on a Mac called Serial. On Linux, I like to use Minicom. You can even use Screen. Uh, and just go ahead and boot the device and plug in your serial. And as long as you have the baud rate right and the RX and TX in the proper position, you should be good to go. Now, uh, if you don't, you might get some gobbledygook. That's just indicative of you having the baud rate wrong. And if you don't get anything at all, the first thing to check is that your RX and TX wires are swapped. So what that means is the RX on this board is going to plug into the TX on this board and vice versa. There you go. Uh, also, it doesn't really hurt it if you get them wrong. So don't worry about it. They're, these guys are pretty fault tolerant. Now the next step for me is to hot glue these wires down because it can be a pain if you have to resolder them, uh, and this just works for me. Another thing that I'm going to do on this particular mod is to go ahead and drill a hole in the side of the case so that those wires can peek through. That way I don't have to leave the board exposed and I don't have to be as ginger with it. This is also a great point to mention that if you're into 3D printing, BG-WA on the Hack5 forums has published uh, some really cool 3D printed switches in various different colors for the Bash Bunny. I use these here so that I can keep track of which one's running what in development. It's, it's just kind of a fun hack and that one doesn't require any soldering it's just a simple 3d print job thank you bgwa i'm going to link in the description below so that you guys can find those stls and lastly i'm going to couple these to a usb3 hub that's going to allow me to not have to continuously plug and unplug and potentially damage these wires as they are very tiny and soldered on hot glue is going to help and the case is going to help but it's nice to just have one thing to plug in and get both of those uh, so there you go a very simple hack, but something that applies to not just most Hack 5 gear if you want to break them up and avoid your warranty, but also numerous other things. I would love to hear your thoughts on like what you've achieved serial access on, because a lot of times they don't even think to lock down, you know, root. We, we actually go as far as to do that on, on most of ours for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, you can sometimes just get a root shell on like a thermostat or something because that's the IoT world we're living in. Uh, so let me know if you've got a, a fun story about cereal, let me know below in the comments. And also there are absolutely no Easter eggs in this video, so don't even look, but um, there you go. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen, trust your technolist. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.